Hi guys, this is the Pumper Jones Tabletop Gaming Review Show. I'm Pumper Jones. As you can probably tell, this week I'm very excited and a little bit nervous because I'm going to be tackling one of the great all-time games. It's right up there with Chess, Backgammon, Parcheesi, and of course Monopoly. You've guessed it, I'm talking about Settlers of Catan. So fire up that Keurig, grab a soft pretzel, and join me as I review Settlers of Catan. The game contains a combination rule booklet and almanac. I'm not a farmer, so I haven't really used the almanac, but I'm sure it's helpful for determining when to plant your crops and things like that. The nice thing about Settlers of Catan is you never have to actually read the rules. Whenever you play it, there's always at least one person who's played it before, and they'll tell you the rules. I like this sort of oral history aspect to the game. You've got your dice, of course, your robber or soldier, depending on who you're playing with, resource cards, you've got brick, wheat, ore, wood, and of course, everyone's favorite, sheep. You've also got development cards. There's a variety of different things and you can use them to get points and build extra stuff or move the robber. That's probably the best one. There's houses or roads in a variety of colors. Of course, I always play with orange, and I usually win when I play with that color. They also include these handy building cost cards. These are very handy for telling the experienced players and the new players apart. Let's take a look at how you set up the game. At the beginning of your turn, you'll roll the dice. Ah, fantastic, that's a six. And you look and see if you've built a house along any tiles with that number. I've built a settlement here and here, and this tile right here is a six. So I'll get two sheep. It's not great. Then on the next person's turn, they'll roll the dice, and again, you'll see if you got anything. That's a four. I don't have any settlements built along a four, so I don't get anything this roll. Let's keep rolling. There's a three. Fantastic. That'll be another sheep for me. Let's roll again. When you roll a seven, you get to move the robber. If somebody puts the robber on you, remember to always put it back on them as many times as possible later in the game. You don't want people to start thinking you're weak or that you can be pushed around. Once you get some resources and stuff, you can build cities. Cities are great because when a number is rolled, you'll get two of that item instead of just one. I'm gonna replace all my settlements with cities so we can see what happens. Great, that's an eight. Looks like I'll get two sheep. We're starting to build up a nice hand of resources. Now once you have a certain amount of resources collected, you can trade with other people. Remember, if anyone gets close to even winning, refuse to trade with them. That's a very key aspect of the game and you can use that sort of psychological warfare. All right, that's a six. Well, it looks like I get another sheep. Okay, and that will be... When you're playing this game and somebody rolls the dice, try to be the first person to add together the two numbers and shout out the answer. Other people will really appreciate that if they're a little bit slower at math. Great, I get a brick. A great way to get rid of some sheep is to try to trade them off on other people. Make sure to be very persistent, trying to trade with every person on every turn. If you really want to up your trading game, or just your Catan game in general, I recommend The Art of the Deal. It really goes deep into some of the concepts that you can use for better trading and just haggling with other players. So overall, Catan is a really fun game. There's five excellent resources to choose from. There's a lot of opportunity for house rules that really give the game a sort of spice and flavor. And it, it adds a, a fun sort of uh, metagame leading up to playing as you're gathering with other people who have played it. You get to haggle and discuss which house rules to adopt into this specific game. Now this is a fun little variant of the game I like to call Settlers of Catan Islands. 
Another common variant of this would be a river setup where you have a water source down the middle with land on each side, and this is great for promoting factions or team gameplay. Something I just want to mention real quickly is the design of the wooden pieces. I covered some of the downsides of the Catan pieces in a little bit more depth in my Ticket to Ride review, which I'll link to in the description of this video. It really puts you in the shoes of a settler. It's a great opportunity to just break away from kind of the mundane busyness of our technologically connected lives and just spend some time in a game that is just pure victory points. There's so much to love about this game from the sheep to the orange pieces to the lightning quick setup and tear down of the board. It's a nearly flawless game and I can't really think of anything negative to say about it, so I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching the Pumper Jones Tabletop Gaming Review Show, and I'll be back soon with another review.